In the Klamath Basin of Northern California and Southern Oregon, a war rages over a resource that at one time was abundant in supply, water. The Klamath Project, an irrigation system originally constructed to bring water and agriculture to the arid west, is now a source of contention as farmers, Native Americans, commercial fishermen, and environmentalists fight for a share of what little water is left. How this water will ultimately be distributed is of great interest to conservationists, who feel this war is only the beginning of a global increase in demand for a decreasing water supply. Can this battle be resolved without compromising the long-term health of the Klamath watershed, or will wildlife be the only sacrifice? Outdoor Life Network proudly presents Earth Rescue. Tonight, water wars in the Klamath Basin. Narrated by John Larroquette. The Bureau of Reclamation set out to reclaim the West in 1905 when they began the Klamath Project, an irrigation plan that converted Klamath Basin wetlands into farmlands. Homesteaders, including many war veterans, were promised lifelong water rights if they farmed in Oregon and California. My grandfather came to this part of the country because of the Reclamation Project. The things that the project promised, of course, was land and water for that land. We never had doubt. We always had a contractual relationship that said that water was to be delivered. The only restriction would be is if it just was not there. The water was there, it's just that the agricultural community in the project was not allowed to use the water. The heart of the problem is that the basin's water resources have been overcommitted by the federal government and by the states of Oregon and California. We drain so much water from the natural system that we're unable to maintain uh, healthy lakes, rivers, and wetlands. And the result has been that uh, several species that once flourished in the basin are now on the brink of extinction. When you have endangered species, it really highlights the fact that we have an environment in crisis. Water has been managed for agriculture in the Klamath Basin for nearly a century. Historically here in the basin, there was 350,000 acres of wetlands. The people that came here in the basin and figured out how to drain these worthless swamps, they were considered heroes. There was little thought given to the effects that it was having on the environment. But values change, you know, it's no longer in to be draining wetlands. You're paying tremendous ecological cost. And a lot of people are, are saying, we went too far. Now the Klamath Basin is suffering from a lack of water. And what little water there is has been delegated not to the farmers of the project, but to the endangered suckerfish and the threatened coho salmon. We had a bucket full of water here, and there was really only one thing that we, we could do, and that was to meet the law uh, as, as passed by Congress, which was the Endangered Species Act. Once we met that law, we simply had no water left to provide for the refuges or for the farmers in the basin. Many farmers, feeling abandoned by the government for the sake of the Endangered Species Act, began calling this year's water crisis a war, one pitting farmers against fish. All through the 90s, we did have deficits of water. Nobody got a full supply. Agriculture got some, the critters on the refuge got some, and the river got some. And this is the first year where the fish in the river and the fish in the lake got it all. For the first time, the federal government is fulfilling its legal responsibilities to protect endangered species and meet its trust responsibility to several Native American tribes. Unfortunately, this year, the basin was suffering one of the worst droughts of record. Because of that, there was very little water left over to provide the historic level of water deliveries to irrigated agriculture. Without their usual water supply, many farmers suffered severe crop damage. My gross from crop production is probably uh, down 55 percent. This is a valley of family farms and what you will see is that the number of families will diminish. Down! 
This year has been pretty devastating to our operation. Come on, girl. We lost 800 to a thousand dollars an acre gross income. That's great fun. There are people here who've been here their whole life. They're 80 years old. They're going to lose everything they've ever worked for. Families would be torn up. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. To save their dying crops, some farmers protested the Bureau's announcement with a lawsuit, claiming that by not delivering the water, the government was breaking its contracts with irrigators. We want water! Other farmers protested at the irrigation headgates, hoping to get water released. Many farmers protested at the headgates and actually went to the headgates and forcibly and illegally turned the water back on. They did this on a couple of occasions. Ultimately, the federal government was forced to spend $700,000 over the course of the year to maintain federal marshals and law enforcement officials to protect the headgates. People from other communities feel that some farmers focused on their own needs are ignoring the impacts of agriculture on other industries. Fishermen's livelihoods are just as important as farmers. They got families to feed too. They've got communities. And the idea that somehow farmers are more important or should be given more emphasis in this is just appalling. It's not family farmers versus fish. It's family versus family. One industry being killed to feed another and overuse of the whole water system in a whole valley with a limited resource that's been overtaxed and overstretched. According to Klamath tribe member Alan Foreman, it is this overuse of resources that has led to the enforcement of the Endangered Species Act and the subsequent water crisis in the Klamath Basin. The Endangered Species Act is just a warning signal, if you will, like the gas gauge in your car. And it simply warns you that, that you're running low on fuel. And we really need to begin to restore the ecosystem that's been damaged for the past 100 years. When we return, we'll learn why commercial fishermen and Native Americans hold the federal government responsible for the collapse of their livelihoods. Americans and commercial fishermen that depend upon healthy water flows for their livelihoods have noticed negative changes in the ecosystem since the development of the Klamath Project. We've seen serious declines in our resources, particularly the fisheries, not only the aquatic animals but the terrestrial animals also. The, the deer and, and other resources have been diminished to an all-time low. In the 1800s, when the federal government created tribal reservations, they became responsible for protecting the resources of numerous Native American tribes. There's going to come a time when there's not going to be enough water. We've taken care of and been given stewardship over this land for uh, thousands of years, and the real problems just begin in the last uh, 150 years. For generations, the Klamath and Yurok tribes have depended on fisheries, but salmon and sucker populations have declined since construction of the irrigation project. They put in the dams in the lower Klamath River, and that stopped the salmon from coming up here. So we lost those. And later on, the suckers, they've declined to the point where in 1986, we placed them on our own endangered list two years prior to the federal government placing them on theirs. With so many dams and diversions throughout the Klamath Basin, tribal members and fishermen are asking for adequate fish passage and screens that would prevent fish loss. Salmon are extinct by policy, by engineering design above Iron Gate Dam. That dam was built with no fish passage whatsoever. The issue of screens, there are hundreds of small uh, and mid-sized water diversions. They all need screens. It's a no brainer, you don't want fish sucked into irrigation ditches. The Bureau of Reclamation, which should know better, has never screened a single water diversion in its project. Under pressure, 
The Bureau of Reclamation says they are working to rectify this situation. We have completed the design phase of a set of fish screens that would screen the A canal gates. We hope to have construction begin sometime in uh, 2002 and have the gates in uh, for the 2003 season. Commercial fishermen say it will take years of concerted effort to rebuild today's meager fish population. The millions of fish that existed historically are now gone. Those that remain suffer from low water levels and agricultural contaminants. Poor flow, hot water, poor dissolved oxygen, and various pollutants from agriculture have created fish kills, major die-offs in the lower river in five out of six years. In 2000, more than 300,000 salmon died from such conditions. Without clean water and healthy fish, fishermen and Native Americans have lost their livelihoods. Commercial fishermen know firsthand the results of overutilization of the resource. When the resource crashes, their ports are closed, their families starve. We can't continue allocating water forever to one user at the expense of all other users. We have to have balance. We have to have sustainability, and we have to live within our limits. The fact that even in good water years, many farms in the Klamath Basin struggle to make a living has many conservationists asking if farming is a viable use of resources. Even before the water crisis of this year, many farmers in the basin were struggling financially. In fact, a recent economic study shows that a third of the farms had been operating at a loss even prior to the water crisis. If you look into the future because of NAFTA and free trade and competition with foreign markets, the chances are that it's going to be hard to economically grow potatoes and onions and other crops here in the future. I think it's becoming apparent that society is changing its priorities on our natural resources and not so much on exploitation and using them to produce money, but preserving them, using them wisely. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Some farmers who recognize the challenges and impacts of farming have offered to sell a portion of their water rights back to the government, thereby reducing demand in the Klamath Basin. These farmers, referred to as willing sellers, are hoping the government will back their idea. We do not want to sell our land, but we have a property right that's being taken anyway. So we want compensation for that taking. Call it demand reduction, call it buying my water. Compensate me for what you've taken and use that water any way you see fit. For wildlife, for those people who want to farm, whatever. We really need to reduce demand to bring things back into balance. Uh, I think one of the best and fairest ways is to implement a demand reduction program that would buy land and or water rights from willing sellers, farmers who are willing to sell their land. When we come back, we'll see how the fight for water came to include one of our nation's most important symbols, the bald eagle.